What's up, everybody? Aaron here from Departures Capital, and we're here with Rich TV Live. How's it going, Rich? Going really good. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, and I'm excited to get started talking about this different topic, you know, investing for beginners. So I thought we'd put out an awesome video, you know, more so educational video about investing for beginners. So we'll let Rich take the lead now, and let's just hear what Rich has to say about investing for beginners. Well, I think that uh, investing is a great way to build wealth over time. And I think the key to investing is you need to be diversified. So one of the first things I would do when I was looking to invest is I would look at how much money I have to invest. Then I would think about what do I want to do with that money? Do I want to be risky with it? Do I want to save for like stability? Am I thinking long term? You know, you really have to kind of think about what you want to do with that. And then once you identify what you want to do, then you have to actually execute a plan. And for me, it's always been real estate, number one, mm -hmm. stock number two. And recently over the last couple of years, cryptocurrency is number three. But because of the market volatility that we're having, having right now, cryptocurrencies has really kind of taken a really a backseat. And mm -hmm. even stocks right now, which I've been in, invested in for a long time right now, are very heavily under a lot of pressure. So it's a very dangerous time for investors that are investing right now. Nobody really knows. There's a lot of volatility. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. Are they going to go up? Are they going to go down? There has been crazy amount of volatility. So when you're an investor, you've got to think about where do you want to put your money. Now, at the same time, volatility is also really good because volatility is how you make money and the more volatility up and the more volatility down, the more potential for winning. So these are all the positives and negatives when investing in stocks. With real estate, real estate is a little bit more stable, especially here in Canada. Mm -hmm. It's more of a long-term investment, but it can yield incredible results. So that's why real estate has always been kind of my number one. It's always been my safe haven. Stocks has always been kind of like, oh, let me play around. Yeah. And cryptocurrencies was also like, oh, let me play around some more. <laughs> and um, what I've learned is I like them all. I love them yeah. all. Really, I do. And I think they all have so much potential. And I want to be a big part of all three industries. Um, however, I still feel that real estate is the safe haven. And that stocks are... A uh, very great safe haven at times too, but at times it can be very volatile and very risky. And mm -hmm. cryptocurrencies are extremely volatile and probably the most risky out of the three. So For sure. that's what I found. What about you? What do you think? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm a hundred percent with you on real estate. I mean, results don't lie. Like my first real investment was definitely, it, it was investment properties still have them. They're doing great. You know, the rents go up, property values go up for the most part. I mean, real estate's not immune to market volatility like we saw in the States, but Canada has a pretty sound banking system, which I really like. You know, our banks are well capitalized. And uh, as we saw in 2008, when the recession hit and the house prices in America crashed, you know, we, we flatlined 0% the next year. Our, our real estate values went up like I think it was 10%. So yeah, real estate is definitely my number one. And then stocks, I don't do cryptocurrencies, but it is cool that I do something else other than you, like I do commodities, so gold and silver. And it's more so a store of value and a hedge than it is like I'm investing in gold to make a huge profit, which not really, but it's all it's nice to have like you said, diversity. Therefore, you know, things, everything goes to crap and you, you know, you have a bunch of gold sitting around there in the bank, whatever. Um, you can sell that and convert it into other stuff and buy, you know, everything when it's cheap or you can just continue to hold it. So it's nice to have those different, those different investments diversified just because like, you never know when one sector is going to tank, right? Like what if, yeah, what if the market completely tanks or what if real estate completely tanks or um, obviously real estate, in my opinion, is the, the least risky of them all because there's just so many things you can do with it. And then not to mention 
if you own real estate and the property values go down, well, you sit on it and re keep collecting rent and paying down your mortgage and building equity. So it's like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different things. And I think, yeah, like you said, when you start off investing, I mean, the only barrier to a new investor is really going to be money and, you know, buying, if you're looking to get into real estate, buying your first investment property with a little bit of money is going to be kind of hard, especially in this day and age when property values are so high, mortgage regulations are tightening and um, capital is not as cheap as it was before. Right? Sure. Absolutely. I know that for myself that I want to get into commodities. I've been thinking about it a lot that yeah. I like to diversify a little bit more. I like to learn. And I think that I learned a lot about cryptocurrencies by being in the industry. And I wouldn't have known a lot of what I do know if I didn't yeah. get education, even though at times it was painful watching everything collapse. Oh yeah. And right now with what's happening in the cannabis sector kind of reminds me of, of what happened with cryptocurrencies <laughs> because everything is really, collapsing um, mm. aggressively but in the real estate sector even though they've made it more difficult for mortgages i haven't seen the pricing of the housing market go down substantially yet no Which i'm a little bit concerned about because the natural thing in my mind is is if the stocks go down will the real estate not naturally go down next like people will start to sell off their real estate right because they don't want to sell their stocks so what are they going to do? They're going to start selling off the real estate. So um, I don't know. I'm concerned. I'm not going to lie. I am concerned about what's happening on a global scale. Yeah. And I think we need to be very careful right now. And right now it might even be a good idea to even stay in cash. I know it's scary to say that, or maybe even put that cash into gold, something, a safe haven that can at least be stable. Yeah. Uh, because right now with the economy the way it is and everything in a very big state of unrest, mm -hmm. there's a lot of volatility everywhere and more red than green over the last month. And there's a lot of panic that's starting to set in. And the big word recession is coming in. And yeah. a lot of people are saying that a lot. And if we are just in the beginning of it, it could get a lot uglier before it gets better. Yeah. What do you think about that? What's your opinion on that? Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely a possibility. One of my, like, I don't know, I've always been, this has kind of been my prediction for the next five to 10 years. And it's not like super doom and gloom, but it's also not sunshine and roses and all that kind of stuff. So my prediction over the next five to 10 years is that we've already somewhat hit peak global growth in terms of this business cycle. So, and then I, I think that's what's caused the recent volatility in the markets for 2018. I think 2017 was like our landmark year that this is like, you know, 2017 was straight up. We shot up into the start of 2018 and then we hit volatility and it's just been crazy for the, for the entire year. But what I think is going to happen is, you know, we've hit peak global growth and um, I think the, that we're going to, inflation's not going to be as high as they expect it to be. Like the Fed's, trying to hit this 2% inflation number. And that's why they're raising interest rates like crazy, but we're seeing interest rates take a toll on the markets, right? Like fear of interest rate hikes, markets get all shaky. Of course. Coupled with the trade war tensions, that's what's bringing us down right now. So, you know, the trade, if they can resolve a trade war, that'll be a positive for the markets. But for the next five to 10 years, I don't know, I can see it inflation stagnating, growth minimal or, not much at all and we just flatline i i don't know if we're gonna i don't think we're gonna crash like we did in 2008 because there was no other than the the debt bubble but we've always had debt so there's nothing that was so inflated like the real estate market in the states right back before 2008 we had a crazy bubble but i don't think there's anything that's been that inflated but i think we could see sideways movement in the markets you know, up, down, up, down for the next five years or whatever. I think we're going to have a slow, um, I read a really cool article. It was like, you know, in 2008, the recession was like V-shaped, right? So it crashed, bounced back up and then kept going. I think this is going to be more of like a bowl. So it's going to be like slow, it's going to be slower. 
not as painful, but painful over time. And then we'll eventually find our footing and getting back up. So that's my prediction. All right. Well, you know what? Hopefully some of these predictions can help you guys at home that are learning. Hopefully you guys can go and smash that like button, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. Okay. And if you're looking to invest, hopefully you can come to our channel here, Rich TV Live and Departures Capital, and we can give you some information that can help you guys in your journey to becoming successful, financially free, and achieving all of your financial goals. One more thing to add. Next video for you guys, I think me and Rich should talk about some investments for the next five to 10 years, stocks and stuff like that, that you guys can start looking at now that can be long-term holds. So we're not talking about the top three picks of next month. We're talking about the next picks for the next five to 10 years that might be some great ideas. So stay tuned, guys. Remember, if you're not winning, you're not watching. This is your boy, Rich, and I'm out. Peace. Perfect. So I think.